Uh, welcome to Bad Influence. In an animated program this week, I'll be saying yabba dabba doo to a new cartoon package. And I'll be... Look, I'm sorry, this light is atrocious. I'm just not doing this link. Sorry about that, she's been like that all day. Look out, Supermodels, Violet Berlin is on the loose. Our main review this week, Aladdin on the Mega Drive. Watch out, Lizard, I'm coming to get you. What do you get for Christmas for someone who's got everything? Well, if you've got a spare 300 pounds, you could get them one of these. It's called a thunder seat, and you can plug it into any console or computer, and it makes you feel like you're driving a tank or flying a plane. I'm using it with a brand new fight and flight simulator called TFX. So what does it feel like? If you drop the landing gear, for instance, you can sort of feel a low rumble underneath you. Or, um, launch a missile. Oh, there it goes. You can sort of feel it exploding away from you. Oh, it's my favourite, flyby. Watch this flyby. It's like Top Gun. And finally, turn on the afterburners really feel them kick in. Excellent. So how does it work? Well, I'll just set it to auto NAND. That's a good idea. It uses the low frequency or bass sound from the music you hear when you play the game and feeds them through to this huge speaker in the base of the seat. Now, the seat itself is hollow and specially shaped to amplify the vibrations and feed them up through your body. So you're not only hearing the sounds, you're feeling them as well. It's really realistic, and it's actually used in real flight simulators. And of course, when you come into land smoothly, you can always plug it into your video recorder instead and watch a movie, like, say, Top Gun. I've got a thunder seat at home, but enough of me and my eating habits. Our main review this week is Aladdin on the Mega Drive. Now, the story may well be over a thousand years old, but there's plenty of life left in this fairy tale. You play the handsome hero as he journeys through the mythical kingdom of Agbar in search of the magic lamp. Look out for some stunning graphics. The original animation was done by Disney artists. To guide us through, here's Sahail. This is the best looking game I've ever seen on the Mega Drive. The graphics are just like you're watching a cartoon. There's nothing special about the gameplay, though. Here I am in level 4, which is the Sultan's dungeon. Before he gets to the end of the level, Aladdin has to escape by avoiding these balls on chains. I'm getting a bit bored of the game by this time, as all the levels are much the same. All he does is leap up walls. Here's a skeleton, which is a new enemy. This enemy is recurring. He appears in all the levels so far. This is the Cave of Wonders. It's one of the later levels, and the gameplay has begun to get a bit more interesting. There's a lot of different backgrounds in this game, and this is one of the better ones. On this level, Aladdin has to kill the statues, but it's a bit tricky, as you can see. This game's got gorgeous graphics and really good music. It's just a shame there's nothing special about the gameplay. I give this game full marks for the graphics, but it definitely loses points for the gameplay. Beautiful, but dull. Don't be fooled by the graphics. This game looks fantastic, but the gameplay lets it down. And so the final scores for Aladdin. The girls gave it a lamptastic 4 out of 5, mate. And the boys gave it an ingenious four out of five. Hello, Thirtless. After the astonishing success of my time travel experiment last week, I've decided to allow you, my fans, to join in this week's experiment. It's a mind over matter experiment. Together, we are going to attempt to levitate this object. Now, concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> right, now keep concentrating while I do the first cheat. It's for Shinobi 2 on the Game Gear. Oh, oh, careful, careful, keep concentrating, keep concentrating. Right, now, it's for Shinobi 2 on the Game Gear. When you start the game, on the password screen, type in F5958. And you'll start the game with all five rescued ninjas and two crystals. Oh, no, no, keep concentrating, keep concentrating. Oh, oh me. He's odd, isn't he? Have a look at this. An animating Sonic the Hedgehog. Drawing that by hand must have taken ages, so it's no surprise then that these days, animation has gone computerised. But previous animation packages have been designed for use by professionals. This one, though, the Hanna-Barbera Movie Studio, is designed for use by idiots, which is why I'm demonstrating it. I thought we'd start with something along a fishy theme, so I'll get me a little fish, and I'll reproduce him. And down in the bottom corner here are the number of frames that I'm using. So I've got frame one, that's where I want the fish for frame two. And we move it on a bit, and I'll put the fish down here for frame three. Now the grey images that you're seeing is a technique called onion skinning. And what that does, it allows you to position your fish 
in relation to the previous ones. Now frame seven, and we'll have him just down here by the octopus. I also, when he's here, I want his eye to open up and his mouth to go into shocked when he sees the octopus. So first of all, I'll wipe out the mouth here. I've blown it up as well because it's much easier to work in a magnified image than it is on the tiny one on the screen. Put the black in, and if I draw his eye in all surprised and shocked like that with an eyeball in the middle and give him a surprised mouth now we want to color him in uh, let's make him yellow and like on most paint packages there's a fill in window there and so i can just click on him and fill it in and move forward and fill it in now why you're saying to yourself didn't he make the fish yellow at first and then he wouldn't have to go through frame by frame filling them all in. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. If I'd been doing proper animation, it wouldn't be exactly the same fish every time. They'd be a little bit different each time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Andy Crane's fantastic fishy animation. The great thing about this package is that it comes with pre-programmed stuff of your favourite Hanna-Barbera characters. Now, here's a sneak preview of the Jetsons having a space box. For my next animation masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen, I have enlisted the help of my video camcorder, tripod, and a smashing little cardboard cutout of Barney Rubble. And we're going to demonstrate an animation technique called stop frame. Now, what happens here is the camera takes a picture of little Barney down there and feeds it into the computer, and then I can grab stills or frames of Barney in a digitized form. So what you do is you move his arm, say, and take another picture of him, or move his leg up there, and take another picture of him, or you can move the whole of Barney right up in the air and take a picture of him. When you finish the sequence you want, you tidy up the edges a bit and you can colour it in and then put it against a nice backdrop. Now that obviously takes quite a long time, but we did one earlier this morning and this is Barney Rubble against the same backdrop as the Jetsons. Now, this week's news and previews. Following on from the success of Zool last year, next month sees the launch of the imaginatively titled Zool 2 on the Amiga. You can choose to play either Zool or his girlfriend, Zoos. There's nine huge levels, a host of new enemies, and even a two-headed dog called Zoon. If you're thinking of buying a handheld, this has got to be the bargain of the decade. Dixons are selling the Lynx at an amazing $34.99. Now, we think it's easily the best of the handheld systems. It's got great colour graphics and brilliant sound. And if anyone tries to tell you that the Lynx has been discontinued, tell them they're talking tosh. Atari have just released two new games for the system, and they promise us this will not go out of production. You can catch him on the big breakfast every day. He's now starring in his own movie, and soon you'll be able to play him on the SNES, the NES, and the Game Boy. I'm talking about Dennis, that cute little tearaway from across the Atlantic. Here he is on the SNES, wreaking havoc in Mr. Wilson's house. This handy gadget is the world's first portable route planning computer. It lets you type in any two points in the UK and virtually takes you by the hand to your destination. Now, I put in Leeds Airport and Manchester Airport, and by simply pressing go, the computer will give you all the directions, junction numbers, and even local sites to look out for you on your journey. Other charts for other countries are available, and they just slot in the back. And now for some more games reviews. Darkwing Duck makes his first appearance on the NES. Join the feathered hero as he fights a host of horrid baddies plotting to take over the peaceful city of St. Canard. Hooray for Darkwing! Here's Amanda. This is a great little platform game with some really nice touches. The graphics are basic, but that doesn't matter because the gameplay is excellent. This level is quite challenging because there's characters coming out all the time ready to kill you. This bit's hard because you have to get your timing completely right, otherwise you fall on the spikes and die. There's helicopters and coming out everywhere at you. You've just got to try and avoid them because they may damage you. The character's trying to kill me again, but I killed him first. I've just fallen on the helicopter, but I'm just a bit startled. It's fun, challenging and playable. It just goes to show you don't need fancy graphics to make a great game. The gameplay's quite good here, but the graphics are pretty average. Mind you, that's what you'd expect from an 8-bit game. The main character's cute and easy to control. There's plenty in the game to keep you interested. And the scores for Darkwing Duck. The girls gave it an excellent 4 out of 5, but the boys didn't think it was that good and gave it an average 3 out of 5.